Did you ever read about a frog who dreamed of being a king And then became one Well, except for the names and a few other changes If you talk about me The story is the same one Maybe you can hear me better now. I'm here today to share with you a story about bullying, but I'm going to do it a little untraditionally. I'm going to share this story with you in terms of the song that you were just listening to, which is entitled, I Am I Said by Neil Diamond. It's one of my favorites. And so here's where we're going to go with this. So why are we here? I ask that you bear with me, because I'm going to be going back in time and sharing with you some experiences from high school. So during my time in high school, I served as the battalion commander for my JROTC battalion, and during which time I had the opportunity to work with a wide variety of students in a mentoring program that I set up with one of my ROTC instructors. One student in particular that I talked to, I will refer to as Chad in this, and he basically revolutionized the way I think about life. And so, this presentation is gonna be decided, divided into two parts while I share with you some of the experiences that I learned from this student. And the first part is entitled Losing Yourself. So I met with the student, Chad, on a weekly basis, and he shared with me his experiences um, being bullied in school. He was bullied because of his weight, he was bullied because of his appearance and his skin color, and he just had no control over all these things that people were decided to pick on him for. He couldn't figure out why people couldn't see the value in him and these things impact, impacted his social development in a couple of ways. So, this is one of the lyrics from the song you were just listening to. Did you ever read about the frog who dreamed of being a king? So, as a result of Chad becoming, being bullied by all of these people, a couple of different things happened to him. First of all, he became an introvert. He decided that it would be better not to deal with people at all, he felt that he had more value in being alone as opposed to letting people see the true him. Second, his self-esteem was completely destroyed. He couldn't figure out why he couldn't find pride in himself and why people couldn't see the true value that he had to offer. Next, he felt as if he didn't belong. He felt out of place amongst his family because he didn't feel like he deserved to be there because of the amount of things that he was hiding from them. And he didn't feel like he was going to be able to fit in with his friends because these were the people who made it their jobs to make his life miserable. And finally, he had an empty feeling deep inside. He emphasized that this was the worst part of the entire experience because he couldn't feel the void that he had inside no matter what he did. So the next part of this is going to be me sharing with you how he found his voice. And so this is where the story starts to get a little better. Chad who, in case you didn't realize, is the frog in the line that I was referring to earlier. Following our conversations, he continued to excel in extracurricular activities. He did well academically. He was all around a star student. He indeed graduated at the top of his class. He did well in sports that he undertook. And so, no matter how much success he had, though, he still clung to this feeling of emptiness deep inside. And he didn't know how to deal with it. So once he gets to college, after getting accepted to every school that he applied to and getting offered hundreds of thousand dollars in scholarship money, he decides he's going to force himself to be social. He's going to fix this problem single-handedly by forcing himself to get involved in everything that he could possibly do. This was his attempt to recreate his image and bury all the pain that he had inside in organizations, academics, work, and any other thing that he could do. The great part about all this is he excelled in everything he he attempted to do, but he still felt this emptiness. So this is the start part of the story where we start to talk about how he became the king and what he had left after all of this. After school and he starts taking off with his story, he still feels that he has a problem. He has this problem of an emptiness. And he, should, he wants to know what's left in his story. In order for me to illustrate this, I'm going to refer back to Neil Diamond again because I really love this part of the song. And it says, I have an emptiness deep inside, and I tried, but it won't let me go. 
This is where Chad was with his life and when he started to name the things that were bothering him. He started to address the issues of loneliness and began to process the hurt and that he was feeling from the years of ridicule and abuse that he experienced. So, one thing that you may have figured out is this story was pretty much the story of my life. This was the story about Chad. Chad was real, just in case you were wondering. Yes. And so as I talked to this student, I began to kind of tune him out because as he talked, he said all things that happened to me, they were all pertinent to the experience that I went through. I too was bullied. I too refused to deal with the problems that I had. And so I have a couple of things that I want to point out to you. Two simple facts. Young people are great at masking problems. Chad managed to keep his secret from his family and friends for years without anyone noticing. I was able to keep the secrets that, of the abuse that I went through from my family up until last night, actually, when I had this conversation with my mother, my sister, and my girlfriend of four years, who's also been friends with me for 10. So I've been, we're pretty good at masking these kinds of problems that we experience. Second, family and friends, especially good friends, play an important role in detecting these issues. If the people closest to you can't detect these issues, then it will be difficult for anybody else to. And so, as I stated, this is my story. And I'm going to pick up with that notion. I had been picked on and pushed around for years and led to believe that I had no value in this world. I had allowed the ridicule that I received throughout school to rob me of my voice. I didn't know how to find it again, and nobody could help me because I refused to allow them to. This happened, this continued until my sophomore year of college. I began to work with this wonderful group of people known as the Peer Dialogue Facilitators. These are some of the most fantastic people that I've ever had the privilege of working with and knowing because they refused to allow me to silence my voice. They refused to allow me to avoid the difficult conversations. They refused to allow me to continue on in this process of isolating myself from people. They became the closest people that I came to know. And I didn't know it at that point, but they are a large part of the reason that I developed the strength to address my issues. So here I stand, a 20-year-old man who has now been carrying the weight of 11 years of ridicule, abuse, and bullying, and I'm now starting to deal with these issues. I began to find my voice again thanks to the fact that I had people who cared enough about me to allow me to feel comfortable enough to share these things. They cared enough about a stranger to, allow me, to refuse to allow me to go through these issues alone. So here's my challenge for you all. We all know that bullying is a prevalent problem across our country and the world. And I have four simple steps that I think you should take. First, ask the difficult questions. Nobody likes to talk about being bullied. And generally, that kind of information is not something that you volunteer to people that you, really, that you barely know, even people that you're really comfortable with. Second, be there for them. You don't have to be the world's greatest listener or the world's greatest detective to try to find, solve all of their problems. Sometimes it's simply enough to create an environment in which they feel safe, and they feel comfortable enough to share. Third, don't let them go through problems alone. A grown issue is the willingness to internalize problems. For my case, and for the case of Chad, we internalized all of the issues surrounding us, and we made them all about us because we had because we didn't feel that we had people that we can trust with that information. And I feel like that can be a common theme with students that I've worked with across the few years that I've been doing this mentoring program at my local high school. And finally, be willing to have the difficult conversations. These conversations could be the most uncomfortable conversations in the world because conversations about your lifetime and personal experience are horrible and nobody likes to share them, but they're absolutely necessary for personal growth. So, here's what I'm going to end, leave you with on this note. I have a couple things. And first, there are multiple paths that a young person can take throughout life. Peers influence this, social interactions influence this, and your local environment influences this. Second, peers are at the center of the self-esteem and the definition of self. I allowed the people that ridiculed me to define who I was. And so with that, they had all power on how I viewed myself and how I think other people viewed me as well.
Third, sorry about that. Harmful thoughts placed in the mind of young children can linger into adulthood. The thoughts that, the thoughts of bullying and the thoughts of how I viewed myself as a child still plague me until this day when I just started to deal with them. And finally, advocacy and companionship can enable people to find their voice, even after they have completely lost themselves. That was the story of my life. The fact that I had people who cared enough about me who, and they were willing to stand by me and allow me to deal with my issues, they helped me to figure out who I was. And I can stand here today, a person who knows the issues that are bothering him and who's willing to take the steps that it takes to fix them. I'm in no way complete, and I've in no way gotten rid of all of my issues, but I'm well on the way with strong friends and good people to support me. This is my challenge for you all. Don't allow people to go through these situations alone. Thank you for your time.